I wasn't saying those things. A mistake that went viral, leaving the entire county red in the face. How officials are making sure last year's hurricane blunders don't happen again. Plus, an iconic resort scheduled for demolition will tell you when and where. And what one local city is proposing to stop gas skimmers before they're even installed. Your Suncoast News starts now. You're watching ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Jacqueline Matter. Scott Dennis has the evening off. Thanks for joining us tonight. Tonight at 6, the Sun Coast is hoping to learn from mistakes made during Hurricane Irma and then fix certain things for the upcoming or for the current 2018 hurricane season. ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick joins us live from the Sarasota County Emergency Operations Center tonight to explain some of those lessons that have been learned. Jess? Jacqueline, the issue here in Sarasota County was frivolous spending, but up north in Manatee County, the deaf community says its needs weren't being met during a life threatening situation. It's an ambulance patient. When the deaf community in Manatee County watched this interpreter translate emergency information about Hurricane Irma, they had no idea what was really being said. If we need to get so and so, it was like you need to get a pizza or something like that. And I was like really mortified and embarrassed because uh, I wasn't saying those things. The issue wasn't just that he was falling behind. He was inaccurately translating what was being said. According to Commissioner Robin D. Sabatino, the contracted interpreter that the county originally hired bailed on them. They could not commit to being there full time, living there during like the three days that we were there. So the county scrambled for a last minute replacement and ended up with an employee's relative. This year, things will be different. The county has gone out for bids and contracted companies who will be able to commit to being in the center while we're in there on lockdown. Meanwhile, in Sarasota County, $100,000 was spent to feed the staff during the storm. That compares to $9,000 spent in Manatee County. The, the company was selected and about a month before hurricane season, we found out that they would not be able to fulfill their commitment. The contractor was feeding first responders helping with Hurricane Harvey. So the county ended up with Madison's. Right now, county staff is looking for cheaper options. Well, it definitely will be a savings. I don't know any numbers right now. We didn't intend to, for it to be that much last year. A bid hasn't been solidified yet. We hope to bring something in front of the Board of County Commissioners within the next couple of weeks or month. Manatee County Emergency Management was fed by the Salvation Army last year, hence that low $9,000 cost. I asked if that was an option here in Sarasota County. Chief Ed McCrane says when a hurricane hits, if a hurricane hits, he wants the Salvation Army out helping people in need and not here inside this building feeding his team. Reporting live in Sarasota, Just Aldrich, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, Jess, thank you. Well, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. And Bob, no hurricanes now, but good to know uh, county emergency areas are pre pre preparing. That's right, and going over some of the changes uh, as well. And it uh, looks as though uh, this particular season is not going to be as active as we talked about in the hurricane special. However, it only takes one storm hitting us to make it a very active hurricane season. Now we have a low pressure area, not at the surface, but in the mid levels and upper levels of the atmosphere uh, moving on by now over the lower Mississippi Valley. This is going to have a change of uh, have a change in our weather on Wednesday and maybe even into Thursday right now. Uh, some dry air in the upper levels of the atmosphere really suppressing the widespread coverage that you would expect, but uh, we've had a few brief showers near the coast. Those have since moved on most of the action along the east coast. It is humid though all across the area and on the west coast. We have humidity as a result of that west wind, uh, big storms of cooling things down along the east coast. And once again, it looks as though we'll see some of this uh, rainfall in the weather picture. Rain chances will be elevated tomorrow at 50%. Even during the morning, there's a chance for a few coastal showers and isolated thunderstorms. It's warm inland away from the sea breeze and it's 90 in Orlando right now, 89 in Arcadia, 86 in Mayaka City and right along the coast within a mile or two in the low to mid 80s. The Gulf water temperature keeps it a little bit milder with that west wind right near the coast during the summer. By the way, this number is at 89 to 90 and that west wind doesn't help much at all. Back to you, Jacqueline. 
All right, thank you, Bob. New details of a brush fire that happened yesterday at the Venice Airport. Firefighters responded to the call at around 930 in the morning yesterday, and they found a quarter acre of a quarter acre fire burning. They say the fire was a half a mile south of the Circus Bridge near the airport fairground area. The fire started in a homeless camp just off of the Legacy Trail. It took them about an hour to put that fire out. Luckily, no injuries or damaged homes. New details tonight on a shooting that happened in Newtown over the weekend. Sarasota Police Department releasing the name of the victim in that shooting tonight. 19-year-old Amos Crawford of Palmetto was shot on Sunday and later died from his injuries. According to Sarasota Police, shots were fired from a blue car that later left the scene. Police are now searching for the person responsible and asking anybody with the information to come forward. In consumer news now, the City Council of Punta Gorda is considering an ordinance to protect people from gas skimmers, even though they've only had one gas skimming case in almost a decade. The Punta Gorda police chief says most of their experience comes after the fact when people report charges on their credit cards. So they want to stop the crime before it affects the consumer by adding a lock and key device that's proven successful in Cape Coral. The police department will be proposing this solution to gas skimmers at a city commission meeting tomorrow. And happening today, if you use a SunPass, you will not be able to add funds to your account through the Pass's website or mobile app. SunPass itself will still be available to drivers, but drivers won't be able to put more money into their accounts for the rest of the week. SunPass's system will remain down until Monday morning as crews work to update equipment across the state. An iconic Longboat Key Resort soon will be no more. The Colony Beach and Tennis Resort has been abandoned for nearly 10 years after a legal dispute between the condo owners and management. Since then, Longboat Key officials say the property has become a hazard to health, safety and welfare. The Director of Planning, Zoning and Building has ordered the demolition for as early as next Friday. He says the town has given the owners a fair chance to address the conditions. The structures are really unfit and unsafe right now and then entering into another hurricane season uh, that just adds to the safety concerns that we have. The director says there is a 10 day appeal period that began last Thursday. So far there have been no appeals. An Orlando developer has bought that land and plans to build a St. Regis Hotel at the site after the demolition. The school district of Manatee County needs to fill hundreds of positions by August. District officials say the goal is to fill the majority of its nearly 300 instructional vacancies by the new school year. The school district says recent retirees add to the number of openings in the county, along with resignations and contracts that were not renewed. But some employees believe there are so many openings because teachers are leaving to work in nearby school districts. Our district is wide enough that you could drive within the district as long as it would take you to get to another district, whether it be Sarasota or St. Pete. The openings do not include the positions the district needs to fill for the three new schools coming to East Manatee County. District officials say the hiring process will begin for those in the spring of 2019. Well, graduating seniors from the school district of Manatee County will be headed to higher education well equipped. According to a survey done by the district, the class of 2018 earned more than $16 million in scholarships and have been accepted into more than 200 colleges and universities nationwide. Now a select few will also be headed to all five branches of the armed forces. So congratulations to the class of 2018. Still to come on your Suncoast News, we'll tell you why you may want to start filtering your tap water. Plus, we'll introduce you to an amazing Suncoast woman who believes financial knowledge is power. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you and for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! Picking out a new ceiling fan? That's a do-it-yourself. Installing your new ceiling fan? No. That's a don't do it yourself. For ceiling fans, rewires, or anything electrical, play it safe. And call on the trained electricians from your locally owned Mr. Sparky. It's no accident that so many of our customers are repeat customers. 
Trust Mr. Sparky for all your electrical repairs. My credit score was not that great. I didn't understand what went into my credit score. It was overwhelming. Do you want to attain better credit health but don't know where to start? Credit Sesame can help by providing you a free credit score. I love the app. It's so easy to use. It's like having a, your own financial coach. Credit Sesame broke my credit score down into things that I understood and it made me think, I can do this. And the awesome thing about Credit Sesame, it's free. It's 100% free. You don't need to go it alone. Get started today at CreditSesame.com. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through True Stage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call. True Stage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. And even if you're on a fixed income, prices fit your budget, starting at less than 32 cents a day. Plus, your price will never increase and your benefit will never decrease. And with no medical tests or health questions, you cannot be turned down for any reason. Call 1-800-842-7189. Now, for a free, no obligation quote, True Stage offers plans to fit your budget. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through True Stage. Call 1 800 842 7189 now. It appears Florida may not have the safest drinking water following earlier tests of water fountains at schools in Tallahassee that showed high levels of lead. A group calling themselves Get the Lead Out recently tested eight drinking fountains at the state capitol building. Four were found to have lead levels above one part per billion, an amount the American Academy of Pediatrics says creates health risks for children. One of the drinking fountains had lead levels 11 times higher than that. The plumbing throughout Florida is largely the same, and we know that the lead is coming from the plumbing parts. It's not coming from, from the aquifer. According to the group, schools built before 1986 pose the highest risk for contamination, and it's estimated that it would cost about $24 million to fix and replace what is needed to make the water safe. A new study by Visit Florida says that a record-breaking number of people are visiting Florida. In the first three months of the year alone, more than 33 million people have visited the Sunshine State. That's more than 7% at the same time last year. According to a study, a large portion of those tourists came from within the state, and the number of Canadian visitors also keeps increasing. But there was a decrease in the number of visitors from overseas. Tourism funds 1.4 million Floridians' jobs. It makes sure those people can feed their families, you know, pay their mortgages. You know, tourism is the number one economic driver in Florida. According to Visit Florida, this uptick is good news for the state, which broke records last year despite damages from hurricanes. Well, our amazing Suncoast woman woke up one day at the top of her game, making really good money, but didn't quite like her job. The Suncoast View's Linda Carson tells us what happened next. Dr. Laura Mattia is a professor, researcher, author, and advisor. She's the director of a program at the University of South Florida that leads to a degree in financial planning. We're creating the new breed of financial planners, um, hopefully planners that will be more for the consumer, for the client, as opposed to just making a lot of money. Not the career path Laura envisioned in college. My bachelor degree was psychology and I wanted to go into a helping profession. She got married, had two boys, and when the marriage ended, needed to find a well-paying job. Most of those seemed to be in the financial field. So I went back to school and I got an MBA in finance and accounting. And I worked very hard, 
and I actually got promoted and got some really, I, I had some positions of real responsibility, you know, controller, CFO positions in Fortune 500 companies. A conversation with a stranger on a plane changed her life. He said, well, you really love what you're doing, don't you? You know, you're so successful. And I said, no, I don't. I thought I was going to the, into the helping profession. So she came up with a new career that combines her financial skills with her need to help people. But she had to go back to school to get her MBA. I had my second child already and I was working full time. Whenever I hear people say, oh, I, you, I can't do that, I always say, well, you know, you can if you want to. <laughs> she also married again, had two girls, got her PhD focusing on women and money, and found a career that makes her happy. I love it. No, I, I'm making a difference. I'm, I have a purpose. Her purpose, creating a new breed of financial planners. It means that your advisor is always going to work in your best interest at all times. And she Actually, shares so her expertise in the community. Me, and I do a, a lot of um, volunteer work, whether it was with Spark or now with um, the Women's Resource Center providing uh, financial education. And so this is the second passion of mine, to get more women involved in financial decision making. She's also written a book called Gender on Wall Street, Uncovering Opportunities for Women in Financial Service. And her life lesson? try to figure out what you want to do and then focus and if you really want it bad enough you can achieve it and so if we listen to this amazing Suncoast woman we learned that money is power and how to get and use that power for Suncoast View I'm Linda Carson certainly some good lessons there yeah good advice too absolutely and a little easier ride this week according to Richard Stern last week it was up and down yeah. in the market this week a little calmer there mm -hmm. as far as that goes for all the financial folks out there <laughs> uh, we are a little calmer weather wise today not many showers around different story tomorrow showers and storms will be a little bit more prevalent I think not a washout by any stretch but we will see some showers and isolated thunderstorms bring some moderate to heavy rainfall at times and again uh, we're not anticipating anything too significant as far as that goes but uh, we will see uh, those showers around. west wind has really brought in warm weather overnight our low temperatures have been unseasonably warm as a result again of that west wind it looks like that will continue on in through Thursday morning too. Our low this morning was 80 degrees and yesterday's low was 80 as well. And it looks as though we will see the potential for uh, the uh, showers and storms even in the coast along the morning hours uh, as we move through time. Tower cam now showing uh, basically beautiful weather outside. We have a few clouds out in the Gulf of Mexico, but not much going on as far as that goes. Traffic is looking good too right now up and down uh, the area roadways, but uh, lots of sunshine in the forecast and looks like uh, we will continue to see that. Here's the radar picture now uh, as the computer is back online. Uh, we'll show you that uh, low pressure area over the lower Mississippi Valley. Here it is uh, right there. It's going to be moving off toward the east. Now there's a stationary front located to the north of us. We had a one lone shower earlier this afternoon. There it is and there it goes. Not much to it. The dry air in the upper levels of the atmosphere really shut this down and it looks as though we're seeing heavy weather as expected along the east coast. Some big storms there near Fort Pierce and also near Jupiter uh, heading off to the east produce, producing some heavy rainfall. This is the opposite pattern that we normally see in the summer months. Storms build in the central part of the state and then work their way toward the west coast due to the east wind around the high pressure ridge located over Bermuda and off the Carolina coast. But that has been pushed down to the south now, that high pressure ridge. We're getting that west wind instead, and that really brings that high humidity around. You notice that one shower by Bayshore. reason why it didn't stick around long is because the dry air at about 30,000 feet. Once the storm builds up into it, it grabs that dry air and kind of dissipates it, and that's what we saw. This energy, though, will move very close to us tomorrow. That will enhance our chances for showers and a few storms. Day planner. A few showers are possible in the morning. The rain chance in the morning at around 30% for or a few scattered showers. It gets up to 50% by midday and sticks around into the uh, early afternoon hours. By 7, I think most of the weather should be uh, pushing off to the east. Once again, temperatures will be warm, upper 80s. It's 85 right now, and the dew point temperature at 77 makes it feel more like 96 degrees out there. The high today, 88. This morning's low, there it is, 80 degrees, well above the average, which is 71. And we're starting off June on a dry note. We haven't had much rain at all at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. We're 73 hundredths of an inch below average. Well, here's the future cast showing a few pop-up showers possible at 5 a.m. And then even more so developing, uh, this could be a little bit further south too, and a few more showers around. And then by 
536 o'clock, most of the action should be in, and I still expect to see a few isolated showers there. And then notice what happens on Thursday. Uh, we still see a chance for some morning showers on Thursday, and a little low pressure area here in the mid levels of the atmosphere will keep us at least a 40% chance for a few showers and a few thunderstorms on into Thursday. So we'll keep that in mind. Uh, by the weekend, we should get back to uh, scattered showers and storms around. Temperatures will warm, as I said, into the mid 80s near the beaches, and we'll see highs into the, again, upper 80s to low 90s inland. For boaters tomorrow, isolated to scattered storms out in the waters. West winds at 10 knots. Seas will be running two feet or less with a light chop out there. And the extended forecast, there it is, 50% chance for storms on Wednesday. It's still 40 on Thursday, even in the morning showers around. And Thursday, maybe on Friday, a little bit drier, but Saturday and Sunday, 40% chance for some slow movers, too. They're not going to move all that fast. And we'll see some showers and even a few isolated thunderstorms over the weekend, but it's not going to rain out the entire weekend. Jacqueline? All right, some good news. Thank you, Bob. Well, coming up next, we'll tell you where your kids can get free food all summer long. Stay with us. This week, the sprint to the summit. President Trump, Kim Jong-un, inside the high-stakes diplomacy before the showdown in Singapore. Now just one week away. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched news. If you think it's hot outside, just wait until you see even hotter savings inside. Only at Rugs as Art Hot Summer Savings Sale Event will you find the lowest prices on a vast selection of stunning rugs, furniture accents, and accessories. This special event only happens once a year, so hurry in before the best selections are gone. The Hot Summer Savings Event ends soon, so don't miss out on the best prices ever. Rugs as Art, Sarasota's only area rug superstore. My California classes experience has been wonderful. My mother's a huge inspiration. Before she passed away, she would say, you should do something special for yourself. First time I saw my closet, I immediately thought, this is the best thing I've ever done for myself. I call it my Tiffany style closet. I mean, I can shop in my own closet every day. I love that. My name is Cynthia, and this is my California closet story. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to mesobook.com. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. Everyone's buzzing about Suncoast View. I like watching the Suncoast View. I like the Suncoast View. The cooking segments. I love the recipes. The theater segments are terrific. Join Stephanie Roberts, Linda Carson, and special guests on Suncoast View for hot topics, everyday issues, celebrities, food, fashion, fitness, and everything in between. Nothing is off limits. They're just fun. For smart, fun talk in the afternoon, watch Suncoast View, weekdays at 4 on ABC7.
Heavy rain and flooding is expected to impact parts of the Sun Coast that will probably be forecasting hour by hour. We will see that plume of deep tropical moisture when we continue to monitor that area of disturbed weather to the south. Weekdays starting at 5 a.m. Sarasota County Schools is partnering with All Faiths Food Bank and the USDA to feed hungry kids this summer. They'll be providing free breakfast and lunch to children throughout the county at several elementary and middle schools. They'll be available Monday through Thursday all summer to any student 18 or younger. Also, lunch bags can be picked up at most Sarasota County libraries this summer. To find a school that offers free food near you, just visit our website at mysuncoast.com backslash summer hunger. Certainly a great initiative there. A lot of kids go hungry this That's summer right. without those free or reduced Absolutely. lunch programs. Absolutely, yeah, because the school's out, obviously. Yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, we are looking at the good weather for folks going out to dinner tonight, uh, and this will be the not going to be a big problem as far as it goes. Just a little bit muggy out there. <laughs> Good chances for showers and storms scattered about uh, for Wednesday, Thursday too. It drops off a little bit on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday back up. And uh, the ones on Saturday and Sunday will be nearer the coast, so they'll have a better chance for development there. We haven't had many. Most of it's been yeah. inland, but uh, we'll see that. Muggy conditions to start things off tomorrow morning, 80 degrees, with it feels like probably around 90. All right. Thank you all so right. much, Bob, and thank you all for joining us tonight. World News Tonight with David Muir is next. We'll see you again at 11. Have a good night.